Welcome to The Crafty View. I'm Diane Williams, the host for the show, and the show is produced by the Craftsman's Guild of Mississippi. Today, I'm here at the Craft Center, and I'm going to be talking to someone. Well, I'll introduce you in just a few minutes. It's always good to come out when you can to the Craft Center because you never know who might be here demonstrating. So let's see who we have here today. Thank you. Oh my goodness, there is something here that everyone needs. Spoons by Lightning Tea. Oh my goodness, and it looks like all kinds of spoons. And there's Mr. Danny Trusty. Hello. Well, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you today? Just great. Just great. Enjoying my day at the Craft Center. Well, we appreciate your coming out. Did you have to travel far to get here? I'm from down at Tylertown, uh, which is about a two-hour drive from here. So we left pretty early this morning, but it was a good morning. It's still a little cool, not quite as hot as now, but it's a pretty nice drive. I recognize your name, Danny Trusty, Danny Trusty. Why is it that I recognize that name? Oh, I don't know. I've been, uh, I spent 47 and a half years in the banking business in Mississippi. And my wife and I, Linda, played music for many years as the trustees of Davo Crossing, and we were members of the uh, Mississippi Arts Council, Arts Commission, Artist Roster, and we were on that for a number of years. And I recently, uh, after I retired, uh, about six years ago, I took up an old hobby, more seriously, wood carving and whittling. And uh, I'm doing spoons and lots of other little things, but uh, enjoying this a whole lot. Wonderful. What kind of music did, uh, tr did uh, your group perform? Uh, basically bluegrass and old time music oh. and acoustically. And uh, I played guitar and several other instruments, banjo, mandolin, and Linda played the upright bass. Oh, did she? I always loved the upright bass. And we both both sang uh, when we also switched parts, did uh, some lead singing, some harmony singing. Really? Yes, ma'am. Now, how did the two of you meet? Did you meet through music or? Well, we were actually uh, uh, actually high school classmates. And I played music all my entire life. And she played some guitar back in those days, back in the days of folk music and she was doing a lot of the uh, Kingston Trio and Peter Paul and Mary and the old folk music uh, from from the 60s. Somebody might recognize you all. There she is. <laughs> she thought she would hide but that's that's the, the better half. Right. The other half of uh, Danny Trustee and tr the trustees at Davo Crossing. So let's talk about the work that you're doing today, the tools that you use to do it, how you got into doing this. Well, <clears throat> as a lot of uh, young men my age, uh, I started whittling it as a Boy Scout, doing uh, neckerchief slides and, and doing small carving projects. Uh, I spent some time at Camp Kickapoo out from Clinton years ago in the early 60s as a, as a young scout and did a lot of carving out there and just enjoyed my time and actually taught some uh, on the staff out there at uh, Kickapoo for a couple of years again in the early 60s but I started the process then and have uh, always done it occasionally uh, as I had time during my working years but uh, at, when I retired I, I got a little more serious about it started doing more. And now, do you only do spoons or do you do a variety of whittling? Basically what I have today is, is spoons. I don't have a, a whole lot of other things, but I have done uh, char little characters and I've done boots and uh, chains and balls and cages and odds and ends. Uh, just a full gambit of, of whittling and wood carving. Most of my work is, uh, well, practically all of this is, is hand done. I use a saw. I start with a with just a plain board and, and use a band saw to saw it out the rough shape. 
and the, the sides. And then from there, everything is hand done. It's hand carved and hand sanded and all, all hand done the old fashioned way, really. The sanding process probably is the lengthiest part, but one thing you, the, the bowl takes some time and I use a, a number seven gouge to get wood out of these bowls and that's a fairly slow process as well, but uh, the sanding is probably the most time consuming thing. So I have some here in various stages. These are in the rough. The uh, light colored wood is bass wood and that wood is from the uh, Southern Appalachia, the Smoky Mountain area. This dark wood is sinker cypress, and this is an antique piece of sinker cypress. That means it's been underwater for a, a number of years, and hence the, the very dark and green color. This is a finished piece in sinker. And there's some others. This is a red cypress piece. Oh, that's has beautiful. Some beautiful grain in it. Yeah. But the sinker is really the older, oldest wood. Some of the wood I have here has been carbon dated to actually 3,300 years old, which was found under a gravel pit down in St. Tam, uh, excuse me, Tanchapo Parish, Louisiana. And I have a sawmills guy that supplies me down in the edge of Louisiana. I was gonna ask you about that. And then how do you get the holes in it, the holes that we would use to hang them I usually use a hand drill, or sometimes I do use a power drill on that, but it, mm -hmm. look, most of the time a little hand hand crank drill. I have one around here somewhere, but it's, I think it may be in the car. Okay. But anyway, these are uh, these are creation of mine. It's simply a spoon with some holes in it. People say, "What are the holes for?" Well, it's to drain drain, drain water, the pot liquor. Drain the pot liquor out of it, or I call it a boiled peanut spoon. It works great for boiled peanuts. You. You know, you dip those peanuts, and if you're like me, you can't wait to test them before they get quite done. So you dip them out, run mm -hmm. a little cold water over them. It'll drain out, let them sit there and cool a minute, and then you can try your peanuts. Okay. But this works great for that, and I had that in mind when I, when I made those spoons. Tell me about these right here. These are just uh, ideas I had to do a wooden scoop. Back years ago, you used to see people doing their cornmeal or their rice or their sugar with what we call a dry scoop. Just go down in the cabinet bottom and they had a container down there full of flour or full of sugar or rice or beans, dry beans or something. So I just made these, these are similar to the metal scoops you used to see in the antique hardware stores. And this one is out of sinker, it's really pretty. I don't know if you can see that, yes. Diane, but that's the lightning tea on the bottom. That's on every oh, spoon. And that's... that doesn't go on there until it, till it's done. It's done. Now, on your, you don't measure this or anything to get those lines around there. No, I just do that. I, well, I do take mm -hmm. a pencil and draw that line and then you draw the line carve it. I, that's hand carved by, by hand. These are, these are not machine done. These are carved by, with a, with a pocket knife. And that's your favorite tool right there, that's your pocket knife? That's probably my favorite tool right there. It's just a, a wood wow. carving knife. This is a Swiss made knife that uh, really holds an edge good and I've really grown to like it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I finish them with a, a food grade mineral oil so that if somebody wants to cook with them, they certainly can. A lot of people hang them up. A lot of people like to use them. And if they dry out a little bit, just put some more mineral oil on. It seems to bring just them right back oil. to life. Okay, everybody, you heard that. Put some mineral oil on it, and it'll come back to life. Now, you have you heard the saying, Danny, that when the pot's about to boil over, if you put a wooden spoon across the top, that it won't boil over? I have not, but that's interesting. That you, I'm going to have to try that. That, that should sell you a few more spoons. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> it does work. I don't know what it is. It grabs the moisture or something. Well, that's so interesting. Yeah. I'll be doing that probably this afternoon when I get home. Yeah. When, that's great. Yeah. Try when you're making a cup of tea or something just to see if it works. But that's what they say. And I've done that myself. Laid a wooden spoon across the top of the pot. Wow. 
Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It works. So multiple purposes, you know, as I look at this one with the, the sort of edge here, um, I was this morning, I, you know, little pots and plants and things in my kitchen, I could have used a spoon like this. You know, I don't really want any major tools for gardening. Right. I just, I, I do everything in the kitchen. I have a hydro garden and I have little pots and things. And when I'm digging that dirt out the bag, just like you dig out the flower. Sure. Yeah. It, it, I'm sure this would work. It would work just fine. So I'm there's sure a lot of purposes good. for these spoons. And, you know, you got that, uh, I love that the pot liquor could just come right on through. There's another one of those. That was a nice peanuts. large yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, we have some small ones too that, that are mm -hmm. really, really cute. Yeah. You ever play around with the handles to do different things with the oh, handles? Oh, wow. yeah. Look at here. here. This one has a, has a, a knot. I, has a knot in it. And uh, it's unfinished, but it's, it's in the rough. Mm -hmm. But it took some time to do that do that knot that takes a little little concentration a little extra extra effort here's one that uh, I made the bowl out of basswood and had a piece of scrap oak laying around and I just married the two up and joined them together well, makes an you, interesting piece it does that's really nice I don't want to well I do want to ask you how you put that together did you have to put a peg in it? And uh, it does. It does have a peg. Now, I did this all by hand. I actually had a. I drilled this part and uh -huh. then carved this and left a peg on it. But I started doing it a little easier. Drill both ends and use one peg. And, oh, and okay. then fit them together. Okay. Yeah. So drill a hole in both ends. But the problem is getting it all lined up. Mm -hmm. to make it work. Now, I know you hid a box that you had, but I, I like what was in the box because, yeah. I didn't mean to hide it. I just had a bunch of chips and things in here. Oh, we get to see all the tools and everything. Sometimes people could use those tools in other art forms. That's, That's what I, the point I wanted That's to correct. make. This is, a, this is a handy little piece. Uh, this is a, a round file. And I use that to clean these holes and make sure they're good, smooth inside. Okay. And people can tie any kind of string oh, yeah, or, or string. rope that they want to through their nice leather uh, lace or something would be good in there. And this is how people can contact you, Danny Trusty. That's his number and his email address. Are you on social media as well, like Facebook or anything? We're not doing Facebook at, at present, but uh, we do plan to do that in the future. Okay. But uh, they can certainly contact us by email. You got the email right on the bottom. Yes. Right here. Yes. So I've got a picture of that. This is fabulous. And again, how long did you say you've been doing this? I've been doing this, uh, I guess, seriously for about the last six years, but I've, I've carved wood. Uh, ever since probably the early 60s. Oh, wow. That's, that, that's a long time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Not quite as long as I am old, but close. <laughs> and how did you carve, uh, how did you get this spoons by lightning tea on here? Uh, it looks like a... Actually, my uh, daughter-in-law had that done. She carved, uh, she sawed out the steak. Uh, in a piece of old barn wood and had a company, I think it was up in Nashville, that did the laser engraving okay. and used the logo for the Craftsman's Guild. That's really nice. And took that actually off this card. The, yeah. The person that in, engraved it took it actually off the business mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Do you have a studio in your home where I you have, do I your work? I have a workshop out back. At, and that it has my uh, band saws and a working area. And fortunately, my wife lets me do my sanding at, at home and I put a towel in my lap and try to clean up my mess, which I've got to do before I leave here today. Okay. And she lets me do my uh, rough sanding and, and while I'm watching TV at night. 
Well, you know that the preservation and perpetuation of this art form is so needed. Are you teaching anybody else? Have you taught anyone? I have taught some people through the years, yeah, and we're talking to the uh, guild now about maybe doing a class in September, so hopefully that'll be forthcoming. We'll, we'll, let, uh, we'll put that out there at, at, at another date, at a later date. Okay. But we're working on that now. We're going to try oh. to have a class in September or October. Here. That's fabulous. Here. That's fabulous. Well, this is just wonderful to see this work and wish I could see everything that you do. Um, what would you say to someone that was interested in learning how to do something like this? They had some time on their hand. and Well, it's certainly a great therapy and it's very relaxing to me. Uh, I get a lot of pleasure out of doing this and being retired, I, I have the luxury of working on a piece and if something comes up I need to do, I can lay it aside and pick it up later and it'll be right just exactly like I left it and I know where it is and I can pick it up and, and go with it and I decide when, when I'm finished with them, I want them to meet my specs and mm -hmm. I want them to, to look like I want them to look so some of them, some of them I can finish in three, four hours, some of them take numerous hours. And just lots of times depends on the hardness of the wood, the big, uh, the size of the project, mm -hmm. what have you, just a lot of factors. But uh, it's very relaxing. You don't see a lot of people doing a lot of hand work in wood like once was done. And, and I like that art form and I hope to keep it alive. What would you say um, would be the toughest wood for a beginner to work with? Is there such a thing as that? Oh, yes. I, something like walnut, it would be very, very difficult to carve for a beginner. You uh, build up some strength in your hands. You know, a good thing to start in is this bass wood. If you can, you can get some, you can get that in hobby stores, uh, lots of places. And uh, you can special order it over the internet, but it's a great carving wood. It holds detail well. Uh, and my goodness, uh, for as far as advice for a beginning carver, take some time to learn the art of sharpening your tools. Ah. If you got sharp tools, you're not gonna get hurt. Mm -hmm. if it, you're gonna get cut more by a dull knife than by a sharp knife. I know that doesn't make sense. But a sharp knife, if you're holding it right, will cut into the wood. A dull knife will not cut into the wood. It will slide, and you will get yourself uh, cut. Okay. So, okay. Main rule is keep your keep your body parts and your hand out of the way of the tool mm -hmm. as you work. Like this, for instance. I'm I'm gonna work with this tool away from me. Yes. And I'm going to be stopping short like that. I'm not. I'm not going to bring okay. it all the way up to my chest. You can tell that spoon, that knife is razor sharp. Yes. Now we talked about retired people doing something like this, but sometimes those of us that are retired and we're older, we want to get into doing something as a hobby. What about those of us that have arthritis or anything? Would the bass would be the best thing, or is I this? I would say I would say definitely start in in bass wood, uh, and build up a little hand strength. It'll it'll. Uh, okay, so over time you could build up your yeah, strength. Yeah, you build up a little a little strength and plus know how. You know the wood's going to behave differently going one way than it does the other way. You see that. You see that knife wanting to bite right yes, here? Yes, yes. So what do I have to do there? I have to turn it over and go this way. So I call that a grain switch. Wow. So you have to, you learn to work the wood and work it in such a way that it works with you and not against you. Okay, is there such a thing as, like if I wanted this piece right here, going across the grain this way would not be the thing to do. Would That's correct. That's absolutely <laughs> is, is correct. Is that for aesthetics or? Well, it, or? Just, it just makes a better piece to work it with the, with the grain going up and down the spoon. 
Okay. If, if you were carving in that cross grain all the time, it would be a problem. It would be a problem. Now, sometimes when I'm carving a bowl, yes, carving a bowl out, I will be going cross grain, but I will be taking very small pieces out. I'm going straight across the grain. So you better have that tool really sharp to do that or it's gonna slide. And if it slides, mm -hmm. that's when you can get hurt. So you notice I've got everything out of the way yes. of the edge of that tube. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would really have to move it a long ways for it to cut me right there. Yeah. But I am going across grain right there. So this is up and down the grain. Mm -hmm. and when I get about halfway coming this way, I'll have to turn around and go okay. the other way. Mm -hmm. And you learn to do that as you become proficient with working the wood. Danny, I wanna thank you so much for being on The Crafty View. And tell all your friends to watch The Crafty View on YouTube. We I will, and thank you, Diane. It's good to finally get to meet you in person. I've talked to I you know. on the phone a few times, and it's great to meet you, and I hope uh, everything works good for the guild, and maybe we'll have that carving class in the fall. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you.